How about now? Can you all hear me now? Okay, you can, can you hear me now? I'm sorry about that. Second episode, we're already having some technical difficulties. So, can't, I can't get away from it. I got some... I got some technical difficulties on the first episode and then now second episode. So for the newcomers here, I know uh, Frost and Savage, I'm not sure if you were here last week. So basically what we do for uh, basically art and coffee is just a live stream where we all hang out and drink coffee and make art and talk about art in general. So if you have any questions regarding uh, my art, your art how to get better and stuff like that then this is the right place for you and if you love coffee it's a bonus how's everyone's weekend oh what's up Naira? why why do you change your name bro it's hard to 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 this gives me trust issues man what you changing your name gives me trust issues because i don't know who i'm talking to but now I know. Thank you. All right. Let's get this started. The main topic for today, uh, it's going to be basic fundamentals, right? And why it's important. There we go. Nice. Got my little PowerPoint. So I got about five different um, bullet points over here. And I'm not going to go in depth with the whole thing just like I did the other day. Because I feel like last week... All I did was a lot of talking and I completely neglected uh, doing the artwork. So we're not going to do that this week. So this week we're going to focus on the art while we still talk about the main topic. I'm also going to be answering some questions on Instagram or questions from Instagram and questions uh, that I get from the DMs or in the chat. Uh, you always got to confuse me, huh? That's right. I had this before my Night Owl account. Oh, gotcha. I see. No worries, man. All right, let's get started. Episode 2, Basic Fundamentals. What do we know about? What do we know about Basic Fundamentals? Why is it important? All right, let's get some work done. So basically what I'm trying to do is mirroring the the smoke effect, I guess, fire, explosion, whatever this is, on this side. So we'll see if we can achieve the same effect. Um, so just relating to the main topic for today, why is basic fundamentals important? I got about five bullet points uh, in front of me and one it says line work, color, uh, number one says line work, color, anatomy, uh, lighting and composition. So um, today that's all we're going to talk about and I'm hoping not to not to over spend my time on talking for each one because a lot of the artists here that are watching me right now currently are pretty much above the beginner level so last week there were a lot of artists that were here and they were asking simple advice and uh, simple tutorials on certain things so I figured that I would give him some advice and tips about fundamentals but right now I can see about we have four people watching right now we have Night Owl we have Weaves and none of those guys are really um, you know beginners in a way because both of those are pretty professional uh artists uh both of those guys but yeah so fu basic fundamentals right you you see that i've uh, highlighted fun and then i uh grayed out mental because basic fundamentals is all about balancing obviously and mastering the the basics so you can't you can't master anything if you're not really having fun doing it right so that's a key word is just first and foremost I would say is having fun if you have if you don't have any fun on what you do um, you, you you will not master it and you will not achieve the level of greatness you know so fun you know it starts with having fun 
and and then it evolves into being a, a, an obsession into a passion, you know? So it's, it's a very um, tricky situation to where you want to have fun, obviously, but you want to take it seriously as well. So it's, when I was starting out, it, it was definitely a lot of fun for me. I bet you, most um most artists nowadays they're well-established artists is gonna tell you that um not everything is as fun as it is you know with at their level that's why i highlighted the word fun is because i just want to remind people to just whatever you do uh with your passion in art um just you know don't forget to have fun while doing it because i most certainly have fallen into um that category where at some point i start i stopped having fun and it became kind of mundane and it became kind of tor torturous you know just to do certain tasks relating my art so it's not really it became unproductive honestly so the the having fun aspect of it is definitely uh important and always always you know you gotta remember that even even i, I like I, I forget that most of the time too so because i I'm t i take a lot of commissions i probably take way more commissions than uh most artists that are you know i would say in my circle i guess but it's tough man it is tough to to get started and and then you're happy one day and then all of a sudden the next day you're drowning with work and it's it's not very um it's not very productive so the first bullet on my basic learning the basic fundamentals is uh line work uh i truly believe um line work is important uh, especially when you're up and coming artists. So mastering the line work, uh, will help you, you know, le uh, mastering the line work will help you, um, have the like clean looking designs and professional looking artwork rather than the sketchy, weird, you know, tone. I mean, it, sometimes it becomes a style, like that's what I'm saying. So that's why line work is very important because once you've mastered it, you can make it as rough as you can, or you can make it as smooth as you can, um, without making it look amateurish, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? So some, a lot of, uh, artists that I know are really good with artwork, like, uh, customs by Shelly, uh, if she's still here, she has a really good line work on her designs. So that's what I mean when it comes to mastering line work, because that that would probably be in most cases in a lot of artists that i know that's customizing art right now uh having a really clean line work will definitely definitely help you uh gain some sales because that's the first thing so you gotta make a good impressions with your uh uh with your potential clients if they see your art with some rough looking line work and it looks amateurish and no one's gonna buy from you you know so i mean at this point i guess to anyone who's watching this you guys are pretty much all professional level um so just me saying this is you guys probably already know this but to to the people that are gonna be watching this later because after this after this is done i'll be posting the edited version on youtube and i want people that are watching it who are you know like beginners and such uh to just realize how important line work truly is so i know you don't see a lot of line work in my style but that's how that's where it evolves right so but basically mastering line work will definitely open up different paths for you so i mean even with my baki over here um 
there's not a lot of line work, but you can tell where everything is coming from because I had to make sure that the foundation of the muscles have definitive lines uh, separating the shadows from the highlights. So that's what I mean when it comes to mastering line work. You, you not just like clean, like especially right here, if you, if you look at Baki, on the scars that he has, look how clean the lines are. So I'm, I'm not just tooting my own horn just to show you, but like I just want to show you guys the effect that it can make, uh, you know, it can have on your painting. And versus to the ones where, you know, if you add a different elements to it, it can be very complementary to your work. Uh, Night Owl said, actually just this month, I faced a nasty blockage on wanting to create at the end of all this. I finally put out myself, I finally put it out of myself to get the portrait done. There you go, man. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna lie if I said I don't have those days. I, 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 um, in most cases than not, I, I, um, actually go through certain things like that too. Uh, just again, be just that fun side of the fundamentals, right? That's what they don't teach you in fundamentals. If you go, uh, study art or in any you know, learning environment, they teach you the fundamentals, they teach you the basics. Yeah, that's cool and all, but you know, don't forget to lose that fun because once you lose it, it's hard to get it back, man. I feel like I'm, I'm you know, kicking a dead horse over here, but I cannot uh, express it enough to make sure that, um, you know, don't forget to have fun when you're, when you're making art. Uh, Weeb said, it's hard to find a balance once you finally get established. There's a lot of work and you may not always want to do certain pieces, even though they pay the bills. Yeah, so that's that's important, right? So paying the bills is basically what I'm doing with all these belts. <laughs> so, like, uh, to be honest, really, do I really want to be painting Naruto belts every single time I paint a belt? No, right? So... But I do it because people pay me to do it. You know what I mean? So it pays the bills. Um, obviously, I've come to a point where now I have the leisure, not always, but from time, time to time, I have the leisure of taking on projects that I, that I just really want. You know, I love taking on different genre like gaming, movies. Uh, recently, I just did a 300 Spartan Belts. You know, so different animes, different shows, different movies, etc. Like those are the stuff that I like doing. Uh, I do love Naruto, obviously. Uh, that's what got me started. But I don't want to be doing Naruto like on each belt every single time. That's why I try to like mix it up. <laughs> I need more coffee. Also, you guys like my shirt? I'm not sure if you can see it, but I designed this myself. So if you guys want one, I'll, I'll put a poll on my story and maybe I can put it for sale on the on the website. So, yeah, I know I got to do my plug, Weebs. I know you're about to say something, but I got to do my plug. Uh, Night Owl said his line work is almost his pride and joy. There you go, man. Enjoy that. What's up, Dr. Eyebrow? What's up, Mashi? What's up, gang? The whole gang is almost here. What's up? You guys are you guys are the real MVP today. You guys are truly doing the God's work just by being here. Because I, I don't intend... So, I did the art and coffee because I love drinking coffee in the morning. And I'm in a good mood in the morning. So, after a good night's rest, just waking up drinking coffee that's that's where i'm at my best you know that's why that's why i decided to do art and coffee because that's when i'm more susceptible to teach and give you guys knowledge uh and be in a good mood at the same time uh because if i do this at night like i know i know weaves has been trying to get me to do a live stream at night but i don't know we'll have to see about that because 
I get really cranky uh, at like starting like around 8 or 9 p.m. I get so cranky, dude. Like I just, I don't know. I might be, instead of like teaching stuff, I might be fighting people on live when, when that happens. So. <laughs> I know Mashi, Mashi likes Grumpy Rich. So like, we'll see about that. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll wear a costume or something and just be like sassy and mad the whole time. I don't know. But yeah, let's move on. <laughs> My second bullet points, obviously, it says uh, color. Uh, custom specialist said I'm actually a night person. My grind time is 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Whew! I don't, I don't know if I can do it. I gotta get my sleep, Shelly. Like, Shelly, Shelly, Shelly says she's a night person. So maybe she's like Night Owl, you know? Night Owl customs. Maybe that's, you name yourself Night Owl because, you know, you, you stay up all night too, but man 12 a.m to 6 a.m shelly i can't i can't do that man i gotta get my some sleep i'm a sleep you know i'm a sleep person so color basic fundamentals number two is color mastering color theory and all that is that a really important i mean i know if you're a graphic designer that's all they teach you and this they they you know go ham on like just the importance of color and its symbolisms and all that kind of stuff but um i would say yeah color is important but they're all subjective right so because red can mean love and passion uh to someone but red can also be sometimes me, you know, can sometimes symbolize uh, violence and aggression. So it, it all depends, man. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that take, take what you learn from color theory with a grain of salt, uh, because not every color has the same meaning to the person seeing it. So basically when it comes down to it, it's all about uh, your target demographic and what you're trying to convey with the results of you know with your art and and such um obviously as a customizer i tend to choose a more bright and vibrant colors to kind of make all my images pop um uh, shelly said i feel like color is only important when it depends on the artist it's more important ah dang it it's more important to know your contrast and shadow yeah so so I'm seeing Shelly's comment on my Instagram DM, okay? It just pops up on my notifications and then um, it goes away very quickly. So I have to read her comments when it pops up so that way I don't miss it. For some reason, she can't comment on the, on my, uh, on the chat. Um, we've said red is also a color that can make you hungry. Oh, I did not know that. Really? Uh, red is a color that makes you hungry? Huh. Uh, Night Owl said that that's why I'm up now currently drinking coffee to go with the flow with the stream. Hell yeah, dude. You you get the vibe. Dang, 30 minutes have passed already. Wow. Alright, let's let's keep this going. So color theory is important. I think only, you know, based on my experience. I'm not a college professor or anything. I don't have a PhD in teaching, alright? But I used to teach uh, professional military education in the Marine Corps. So most of, the most of the stuff that I'm teaching to you guys right now, or that we're talking about, is just from my own experience. Okay, so to me, while color is very important, I do know that it's subjective. So if you, if you can, as a customizer, we paint a lot of, especially in the anime community, we do a lot of bright and vibrant colors to make all the images pop. Uh, one thing I would say is that um, learn uh, the basic of lighting and composition, which brings me to point number four and five. We're just going to put it together because color, lighting, and composition goes hand in hand together. Um, and what I mean by that is because look at the composition of the belt here, right? You got the Ujiro Hanma all the way right, right dead center. And if you notice, there's while there is a lot of stuff going on around him, there's this fire, smoke, different characters, different colors. 
while there is all that stuff going on around him, I decided to choose black as the color to kind of separate him from the rest because he's my centerpiece. So the way to make him pop is to make a dark background to contrast some of his uh, highlights on his muscle. So if you can see the muscles on uh, on his back, it looks even uh, more, uh, it looks even brighter than the rest because of the black background. And so from people looking at it from far away, they're gonna they're not gonna see every single details obviously, but they're gonna see it. They're gonna notice the iconic uh, demon back uh, in, almost immediately just because of this black background. So when you're customizing something, take, uh, keep it in mind uh, how you play with the lighting and the color of your work because if if I put uh, Biscuit Oliva in place of Bucky. Uh, customs by Shellis. Black is honestly the best background overall. It really adds value. Yeah, there you go. So that's right, Shelly. Uh, it definitely adds value and some depth to the colors. So like what I was saying was if, if I put Biscuit Oliva in place of Baki with him having already a darker skin, it might not work as much just because of his skin tone. So for him, I chose to um, see if you can see that. For him, I chose some very, like, very light cream to yellow to orange-ish. All right. So, hey, what's going on, TikTok? How you guys doing? Yeah, sorry about that. I'm not answering the chat right now. So if you guys go on Twitch, uh, I'll, I'm over there answering the comments. Anyway, so for Biscuit Olive, I decided to choose uh, a brighter contrast to you know, for the background to kind of um, um, make his skin color pop even more. So like Shelly was saying earlier, it's like black background is always a good choice if you're trying to make uh, your subject pop from the background. But in reverse, what I did with Biscuit Olive Ice, I did the, uh, the reverse of that where, because he's already has a darker skin tone, so I made the, back, the background really bright to kind of uh, make him pop from the rest. So that's kind of just like a little, not like a secret, uh, a not so secret, secret technique kind of way because I mean, and it just, and it works out because it bleeds, it bleeds next to Naruto. So with the yellow and orange background, it, it just kind of transitioned very easily to Naruto. And we all know Naruto's color scheme, right? So for the, for Naruto, I decided to go with a deep black and some, if you notice over here, I, I use a lot of the darker orange ones rather than the usual uh, bright yellow. That's, that's because the background for this one is already a bright yellow or almost cream. So I decided to do a darker orange to make that stand out. So you can see a lot of this, the, the stuff that I've done here when it comes to the color composition is that like over here, you can see that I chose not to block this portion out to kind of show you guys the transition from light to dark and how it's black over here and then purple over here and then maroon over here, orange here, yellow here, cream over here and then white here. So it just goes on and on. It's that whole transition of colors, but that's done in purpose to make sure each one of these characters pop from the background. You know what I mean? Each character needs some love. So let's go back to Bobby. Let me get some more coffee. I got my big uh, Yeti today because, you know, I ran out of coffee last time. Um, Masha said, if Red always meant anger and rage, then I would, I guess you would see me as a very aggressive person. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but you are very aggressive though <laughs> no I'm just passing Mashi. you're a very kind person thank you for being here uh, Dr. Eyebrow said uh, yeah and people see yellow more than red that's why I get noticed hey there you go so, so that's one thing okay 
the the let me show you, let me tell you guys a graphic designer secret when i was studying graphic design in college uh they told me i learned that um yellow is actually um the most seen or recognized color uh you know in human eyes uh it's been it's it's scientifically proven that's why most of the highlighters are yellow um because it helps you for some reason yellow helps you retain more memory so a lot of the marketing uh department use yellow nowadays in a very targeted and concise manner where they would use yellow to highlight certain things and it makes and your brain actually remembers what you see in yellow more than if it was any other color like if my logo is red or if I said something in red I type something in red right you, you won't be able to remember that as much as you would if it's highlighted in yellow so that that's a very good point uh, dr. eyebrow because I actually studied that in college and that's it's scientifically proven there's a lot of um, um, peer-reviewed uh, scientific articles are out there that are you know supporting about the uh, yellow being the most recognized color in the world uh, frosted savage well color theory and understanding the different mixtures allows for everything to fall into place being able to understand what needs to be mixed to get to certain shades is a massive role dude that is gold thank you for saying that yeah understanding the color theory understanding the spectrum the shading value hues those are huge man like when you see a, an artist with some great you know artwork that they've shown on instagram those are not just there because they did it and they got lucky doing it sorry i keep burping man yeah that means I got to drink more coffee. That's actually a really good point because if you look at a lot of the amateur work out there on Instagram that are, you know, some startup customizers, you see a lot of people, and I'm guilty of this, right? Sometimes I overdo this all the time. I think I overdid it, especially with my Berserk shoes. I went all out red 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 on everything just red and black um to a lot of people it looks cool it looks great lots of details composition wise it's garbage okay because you can't even see the characters you know what i mean you can't even see what you're looking at you all you see is a lot of black line work and some sh red shadings so I'm I'm the biggest critic of my own work, so I would I will admit if if something is not up to uh, up to standard for me. Here, there we go. But yeah, so if you see a lot of the amateur work out there on Instagram, you'll find that a lot of them tend to do so much uh, packing packing in so much details in one thing like. Uh, you know complete disregard of um, composition and color because you know they think they put too much they put a lot of work into it that it would look very cool it would look good on certain cases yeah it might but a lot of the times it shows that it's an amateur work because the the colors are not there properly the um, the compositions aren't quite right. I mean, you can tell just by the eye test. So, um, and yeah, and I'm not saying I'm I'm a full, you know, I fully mastered color theory. I, I'm compared to like the greats, I'm I'm nowhere near close being a master on that. I'm over here still guessing like the rest of you. Um, but yeah, color spectrum, color theory is very important. Just knowing, like you know. Just knowing green complements red, that's why Christmas looks so good all the time. You know what I mean? So just kind of the green, because green and red is the opposite of each other. So they become complementary. 
Masha said, I feel like I'm being in an art class and I love it. Well, Masha, you're in the right place because this is um, class number two. So <laughs> we're just getting started. I got, I got a lot of things to, to teach and to talk about. Uh, Shelly said, I think green and red is ugly. <laughs> so, well, you see what I mean about being subjective? Because I, I think green and red is beautiful and she thinks it's ugly. So that's what I'm talking about. Don't worry about colors, all right? Colors are subjective. Don't worry too much about symbolism and all that, what it signifies, because you're not going to get it right. Colors means different to everyone. Um, lastly, I'm going to talk about anatomy and this is the questions I get all the time, especially, you know, when I do Baki, uh, this type of character, they ask me, bro, how do you get such a defined muscle? How do you get that effect? How do you do, you know, none of this works without a good foundation of basic anatomy. I can have highlights i can have you know shades i can have bright colors i can have good composition but it's all gonna look like shit if i did not know a lick of anatomy so i know a lot of artists will, uh, will disagree with me because a lot of them are saying well anatomy is just also subjective and it's all about style it's all about you know, Oda from One Piece didn't even master anatomy. <laughs> and I'm like, Oda does know anatomy. And second, you're not Oda. So let's drop that argument <laughs> for a second. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that learn, please learn anatomy. You can Google it. You can buy a book, YouTube it, whatever. Learn, learn your anatomy because once you learn anatomy, that's when you can go into different style. Like that's what I'm saying. Like when you're just a beginner artist, don't worry about style too much because style comes in, uh, you know, towards the end there. You'll start to develop it before you know it. But learning the basic fundamentals and basic rules of art will help you be successful in the long run. Uh, especially with anatomy look how obviously i did not invent baki i did not draw baki obviously but i'm just quite impressed by the creator's um mastery of anatomy when i paint baki every time it makes me appreciate his style of art even more because this is hard as hell um just knowing every single fiber of the muscle every single you know so you got the the trapezius at the top here you got his bi uh, biceps triceps i mean like just the accuracy of the um the um fibers on the forearm this is just insane and people said it's all about the style but yeah it's style but it, it's a bit exaggerated but they do that a lot in anime and manga so that way people can see what they're looking at because if they make everything realistic style wise it looks boring that's why they do a lot of this superimposed stretched out like you know exaggerated uh, uh curves and lines so that way people can can recognize what they're looking at and that's mastery of line work anatomy lighting color and composition all of that in in one single swoop uh masha said i should make my logo yellow <laughs> there you go you should do that uh so what am i hearing is gold would be good for marketing technically cool it is obviously you don't want to do it too much there's you got to also find the balance on that obviously um color wheels are underrated every artist should have one i agree i agree um 
if you if you want to be a, a serious serious artist i think color wheel is definitely a must-have for an artist anatomy that's a fun topic and one of the hardest things for people to actually get good at yeah it took me forever to get somewhat decent in anatomy like I, you know i'll just say this okay most of you don't even know that my weakness in anatomy uh besides obviously drawing pikachu uh inside joke but <laughs> my biggest weakness in anatomy is actually drawing feet i i am really bad at drawing feet <laughs> I am really bad at drawing feet and ankle that I try to avoid them as much as I can I know I should practice I preach you know I should practice what I preach but man I suck at drawing feet so there you go a little tidbits about me why do you think you don't see feet on my drawings all the time it's always like the 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 top half of the characters huh so <laughs> oh man handsome feet will be the death of me yeah yeah for sure hands hands are definitely like every single time you want to challenge an artist you want to challenge an artist ask him to draw hands <laughs> Oh man, I ask, dude, you want to piss off an artist, man, go ask him to draw hands. Oh man, you'll have a fun day doing that. Go like, go to a Comic Con and go to the artist alley and ask every artist to draw hands. Bro, you, you, yeah, you're gonna be there all day. Um, no, the hands for me, I, I take pride on being able to draw hands. Uh, because I put in the hours, I put in the... Uh, I put in the work, you know, the hours, blood, sweat, and tears, literally, just to be able to draw hands in an early age. Because uh, when I was in when I was in high school, this I, I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of uh, artist friends, and we would do art competitions in our circles all the time, and that's how I got so good. Because a lot of them are so much better than me, and. Uh, by uh the main thing that i saw from them is none of us none of us can draw hands so i practice like quite literally days and nights almost to a point of obsession just to make sure that i can draw uh draw hands better than everybody else so and i i, I think i pride myself on doing that because if you look at the hands of uh yujiro over here i mean Look at those fingers, right? And now I'm just realizing one of them is smaller than the other. <laughs> Crap. On the cam, I guess the camera has a different angle to it because the left hand looks smaller than the right one. But anyways, you get the point. Uh, yeah, hands is definitely uh, Achilles heel to a lot of artists. To me, it's about the feet and the ankle. I just can't get that right, like, like, degree of fold into their feet. I don't know why. Uh, I might need to, like I said, I might need to take my own pill and just uh, go buy me some anatomy books and start drawing feet. No, the feet by Mashi. Uh, Drawing a person without the understanding of anatomy or basic anatomy will cause your proportions to look completely off. Yeah, so, and this is what, this is what grind my gears, right? A lot of the beginner artists tends to have inaccurate body proportions, right? When they're drawing. A lot of them will admit that, yeah, I need more work but some are stubborn a lot of them would be like no that's my style that's me you know that's what i do that's my style but like bro no anatomy has nothing to do with style and don't tell me about the one piece argument because the one piece argument is invalid because oda oda sensei It's a writer first, okay? 
he's a, he's a writer and a novelist at first before he became an actual artist. So, and he even admitted that he he could not draw uh, a female body for the longest time. So a lot of the female characters in One Piece tend to look the same, right? They have this very exaggerated hourglass figure um, and the eyes, they all look the same except for, you know, small differences for each time uh, for each character to just kind of separate them. But mostly they're all the same because he's, he, he uh, admitted on uh, not, you know, there was an interview about it a long, long time ago, but anyways, he's gotten so much better now, obviously, he's, he's Master Oda, <laughs> you know, all hail Oda, um, but anyways, yeah, no, Oda knows anatomy, because if you see, a lot of those stuff are very exaggerated, but that's what I'm saying is that if you don't know anatomy, and you try to exaggerate certain body parts to pass it off as your style, it comes off looking off. You know what I mean? If a professional do exaggerated body parts, it looks so good for some reason because it's composited in a way, uh, the composition is coming from the knowledge and understanding of the basic anatomy. So there, there's a huge, huge difference Uh, you can draw perfect hands but not feet. We found your witness. We <laughs> oh man, don't tell people about my weakness, all right? This is just for the art and coffee community. Hmm. But um, yeah, that will do it for uh, for the main topic. That, that, that will do it. So just line work, study line work, color anatomy lighting and composition okay so if you have any questions for me you can reach me on my instagram dm um actually i want to ask you guys um do you want me to start a discord let me know in the chat if you guys want me to start a discord um and i'll send you an invite link so that way uh i know there's a lot of good artists watching me right now so if we do maybe a discord we can all share ideas and uh, vote on a topic for next week or maybe you can even correct me if you think that some of the stuff I said here today is wrong feel free to correct me uh, I have no you know I have no problem being corrected because a lot of the stuff I'm teaching per se right now today it, it's all about you know from my own experience and what's important to me uh, it doesn't mean that this is what's going to be important to you and it doesn't mean that um, it's going to work out for you just like it worked out for me. Uh, it's it, Everyone have their own uh, perspective and experiences and everyone will have their own style, etc, etc. So let me know in the chat if you guys want me to create a Discord so that way we can have a better understanding on like the next week topic and where to move on from here. Cause, um, yeah, we've said, yeah, Discord so people can talk in real time. Yeah, I, I'll do that because I think one of the benefits of Discord is having to go, I can go live stream something and show you guys behind the scenes stuff without going live. You know what I mean? Because a lot of the times I don't really want to go live on public um, showing off what I got going on. But for certain like Discord community, I can show you guys some private stuff that I got going, some, you know, some stuff that might uh, be helpful to the community, you know, just it. And the reason why I said Discord is because that everyone has a voice in there. We can all, it's basically just like a group chat, right? I, you all know what Discord is. So it's not like an Instagram DM where we're just talking uh, with each other on one on one basis. Night Owl said the hand twist and turn the hand uh, twists and turns so many goddamn ways it's pretty irritating but now that i understand how to do them i don't struggle as much yeah there you go man yeah just just understanding them just definitely um boost you up to the next level someone i know by the name of Grimm knows how to exaggerate human proportions extremely well and he said that himself in order to exaggerate properly you must know the 
Yo, gold right there. You just proven my point. There you go. So that that'll do it for the main topic. I am gonna answer a couple of um, Instagram questions. Um, Nano Stilo asked me what kind of camera do I use for photos and videos. So you're looking at it right now. I'm, I'm using a Canon uh, Canon EOS R with just the stock lens, the 24 to 105 millimeter. Uh, but I also have the 55 millimeter lens over there for portrait stuff. Um, but most of the time, anything that I post on social media and on my, uh, especially Instagram, most of it are just taken by my, uh, my phone. So people ask me all the time, how do I take pictures of my belts? I use my iPhone. So I don't, I don't even use my DSLR for my belts, but I use my iPhone for, for my belts and I'm able to get a very clear, um, picture of it. So that's Caleb said, how do I do fire without an airbrush? Um, that might be a topic for some other week. I'll probably do a full tutorial on that for some other time. I'm going to save that right now because it's get, that's going to be hard to answer without showing you how to do it. Uh, Real Ray J said, could you do a tutorial on how to paint the belt? Uh, yes, that's another topic I'm saving up for later. Maybe next couple, next couple of weeks once I... Right now, I'm only at episode two. You notice there's a lot of pause awkward moments and a lot of me just looking up thinking of what to say because I I'm still getting used to this I'm not used seeing I'm not used to seeing myself in front of the camera and just talking like there's literally nobody here and I'm all alone just talking so I feel like I look like a crazy person okay um, but I'm still getting used to the twitch to streaming to all that so but once I get comfortable, I will definitely do an episode where it's just me doing a tutorial from starting the belt from ground up, from opening the box, pulling the belt out of the box, to sealing the belt, and to shipping the belt. How about that? Okay, so thank you for that uh, question right there. But right now, guys, uh, I have about three minutes left before... 10 a.m. So what I want to do, I want to show you guys what I got going on. I received a very nice package uh, in the mail uh, last night. And I want to show you guys what I got. Painting realistic flames with a brush is very irritating, but achievable. Yo, yeah. So have you seen the, uh, have you seen the, the Sasuke? belt that I did where he was doing the uh, fireball jutsu those are all done with brush that's not airbrush and that didn't take me a lot, a lot of time mm. I am gonna show you guys what I got cooking up hang on for me to show that I have to be able to make sure I have a dry surface all right paint paint is dry Hang on, I'll be back. I'm going to show you guys what I got going. All right. How many of you guys are still watching? Check it out. Huh? Let me show you guys what it is. I've never shown this to anybody, okay? So this is just for, this is just a privilege I'm gonna give you guys, because you guys are here supporting me on my, uh, on my live, so. Oh, right here. Huh? What do you guys think?
Damn. Thank you, Mashi. So this is a panoramic print. Yes, Shelly, prints. Yeah, so this is the panoramic print of my very first belt, uh, the Naruto belt. But it's not just any print. It's not paper. Look at that. It's canvas. That's not paper. All right? It doesn't wrinkle. Okay? It's literally canvas. You can paint on this. So... I plan on releasing this sometime soon. I'm waiting for my Akatsuki. So what I'm doing is releasing prints of the very first 10 belts that I've done. So uh, a lot of people have asked me on my DMs that they wanted something from me that they can afford. And I feel like this is an answer to that because they want the artwork more than the belt itself. So this is something that I could probably sell to people and, you know, with a very cheap and affordable price but there is one more thing uh shelly said people are going to start getting a whole collection of bentegui arts bell yeah so that's that's the goal right but i'm not just selling prints i'm not gonna say what i'm gonna do yet i know i told weebs about it but um you know he's i made him sign a nda so he can't uh he can't say nothing but just just look at this Look how bare and boring this is. Okay, look at this and just Google Naruto scrolls. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah. Um, the good thing about this is that it's not paper. So it literally folds into a cylinder like a freaking scroll. So... If you would have guessed by now, I'm not just going to do the print. There's going to be something else to it. So each one will have one. So. But that'll do it, guys. I think we stuck to we stuck to one hour, which is good. Because the, the very first episode took me about an hour and a half. Because all I did was just talking and talking. Um... LOL, I'll post my Venmo if you want to. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, so last week all I did was doing a lot of talk rather than painting. But this time we actually did a lot of painting. So that's a good progress for me for one hour. Um, I usually get, you know, a lot less done than this in an hour. But yeah, thank you guys so much for being here today. And uh, I will do the Discord sometime this week and invite y'all um and then you can help me pick out the next topic for next week and or just kind of if you just want to chat and chill you know privately that that's cool too so yeah we'll do that we'll definitely do the discord so without you know i <clears throat> but that's pretty much it you know i don't need no introduction i didn't even do any introduction y'all know who i am so uh, maybe in the next coming episode, I'll be more a, a bit more professional about it. But right now, all I'm doing literally is this is just an art stream for us to just hang out and chill. You know, it's not a podcast. It's not a thing where we all be professional about it. It's not like that. It's just hanging out as friends. So, well, you all know who I am. So I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. <laughs>